Hey everybody, this is Jolene, and I am going to bring you a little design that will work around a mask. I'm going to use Paradise White, the matte version, and then I'm also going to use Tag Dreamsicle. And this uh, cake has a lot of different colors in it. I really like that it has matte neons, and then it has some softer pearl at the bottom. So the purple and the white are pearl. And so I'm going to load it up. I'm going to spray the cake and spray the sponge. And then I'm going to load it back and forth until it's pretty well loaded. And then I'm going to put a base over my eyes first with the sponge. I like these sponges because they create a good shape over my eyes. If you want to use a smaller one for a smaller face. I don't think, I don't usually feel like I need it though. Uh, but I'm going to use the all the colors over the top. Now, I did add a little of that Paradise White to the end of it to make it pretty bright right there on the center of my face. You can see those neon colors coming through beautifully. And then I'm going to need to go across my eyelids and across my forehead. And then I'm going to go underneath to create the cheeks. And so this little cat will start coming to life pretty soon. You'll see what I do. To add the um, nose area, I'm going to dab a little bit more of that white right there in the center. You want to make sure you pinch the sponge to go underneath the eyelid. And I felt like it was a little light there. So I added some more paint to my sponge. That's one thing you have to watch with neons. You have to make sure that it's saturated enough with water because they can wash out on you after the first couple of applications. I'm going to load my brush up, uh, my sponge up again. And I'm going to dab over my forehead to make two ear shapes. This is the fastest way. This is how I work out in the field. You know, I add the little shape over the forehead with just the tip edge of the sponge. That creates a nice point coming in and just clean it up a little bit. There you go. You can see how the base looks really close. Being a little picky with my ear. Okay, I'm going to come back with some tag black and a small Mark Reed number two. The Mark Reed is one of my favorites. I'm going to use it to do some flicking motions to create a fur-like effect on the outside perimeter of the cheek part of the cat and also the forehead. So I'm going to rotate the brush and the paint. And then I'm going to start with small flicks in and out to create a fur-like effect, all trying to point towards that center point of where the nose is. Right in between the eyebrows is what you're shooting for as far as the center part. Back and forth. Okay, that encloses it. Now I'm just going to make a circle around to enclose the eye. I want to get a, bit, a little bit of weight so the line's a little bit on the heavy side, but with that small uh, mark read, I'm doing some flicks there on the bridge of my nose to enclose the bottom part of the muzzle. The mark read allows me to get nice thin lines. Here comes the magic part though. Here is where the nose goes, right in between uh, your eyebrows, just about. And that's how you make the animal look more realistic. You're going to put that nose right in between where your eyebrows are or a little bit lower. Now, on a child, the eyebrows aren't usually quite as heavy or as dark as mine, so it's a little easier to hide. 
I'm going to go around like you would around your client's mouth to make the muzzle of the cat. I'm going to go around also again, coming towards the nose, and then I'm going to make a line straight down the middle, and then I'm going to go off to the side to create that split lip, just like I would if I was working on a child's mouth. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to make a couple of more. I'm going to load, reload my brush and I'm going to go around the ear portion, pressing and pulling up, trying to vary that line size, and then pressing and pulling down and doing a couple of flicks inside the ear just to uh, simulate a little bit of hair. I'm going to do the same thing with the other ear. Um, as you can see in the video though, I decide that I don't like how dark that is. I didn't load my brush correctly. So uh, I'm going to go back and like I said in my live the other day, it's just face paint. So you can go back over it if you want to, if you feel like you need to. Just start back over the same line. I added a little bit more paint to darken my line. If I was working quickly in an event, I may not even do this. I may just leave it. It just depends on how much time that you have. I'm going to make a couple more flicks to simulate that hair inside the ear. Now the center of my design, you can go a couple ways. Um, I decided to do a little flick and then back down for kind of like a little curl in the center and then I'm flicking back and forth across the edge of my forehead. And then I'm going to go and close the rest of my eye, connecting to the muzzle. You could have been done right here. You could add some glitter and be all the way done. I'm going to add a little bit of pizzazz. I'm going to go ahead and flick in like I would if I was doing a cat muzzle on a kid's face or around their mouth. Just to simulate that cat muzzle. If I was doing a dog, I would do dots. You could also come back in and add whiskers if you would like. Okay, and so pretty much that's the end of where the cat needs to be. I'm going to come back in though and I'm going to use a stencil. This is one of our uh, Denise Cold stencils. It's tag white and I'm going to load up a dauber and I'm going to, this is the uh, Frozen collection from Denise Cold and I am going to put those diamonds straight up and down going down towards the focal point. You can use any pattern stencil that you would like. It adds a little bit of whimsy and a little bit of interest. As you see, I am adding it to the cheeks. So you can come in with a cheetah pattern or you could come in with uh, something like dots or anything like that, anything that you have. The good thing about these daubers is you can stay right where you need to and you don't have to worry about your sponge overrunning your design because occasionally that will happen to me. Now I will say um, I probably should have reloaded before I did my eyelids. This uh, side did fine. The other side I didn't quite have enough paint so I'm going to go back in and matching a pattern that you already put down is kind of hard but I managed to uh, match it up with, yeah, there we go. Oh, oh, I found it. Okay, so I've matched it up, and then I'm going to go back over with that white. And that adds a little interest to the design. So 
I must have touched my face sometime while, while, while I was painting. And so I'm adding a little blush to the center of the face to just kind of perk it up a little bit. But you can see that little mark on my cheek where the neon managed to touch my cheek. So I'm going to show you how to remove that. All you'll need is a sponge, the clean side of a sponge, even if you've used the other side, and you'll just spray it with water. And just like magic, you don't have to worry about getting the baby wipes out. Just wipe it over and it's all done. So thank you for watching. This is the design, a cute little cat. You can wear it with a mask. And then the kids are able to ask for their animals. Just think about pulling it up and in between the eyebrows. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Love you guys.